supposed to be like new buildings like this one, some kind of the same thing here, but uh, they made some study from the on the ground to know a bit um, <coughs> for the the pollution of the, the ground. Of the yes, ground. And they, they realized that there was a huge. I don't know if I can really they're do that. And say that publicly, but, <laughs> no, no, no. They're called gray uh, industrial areas. Yeah, exactly. So they realized that there was really heavy pollution, uh, really near the surface. So it's really going to delay the, the start of the construction because if they, they have to clean that, or uh, I don't, I don't really know what they're going to do. But so it's kind of a non-certain date of uh, of end. Of, uh, of year. And so, so uh, what are you guys going to do? And have you have plans in case you have So plans? we're looking for a plan without, you know, not many, uh, I mean, we don't have a huge uh, pressure on us because, well, you know, we cannot, we don't have to leave like next week, so it's okay. We arrived here like four years ago and we were supposed to stay two years. And uh, because the beginning of the project was like a small project, uh, but since uh, two years, they've been delaying and delaying and delaying the end. So maybe now it's officially one year that we can stay, maybe two, maybe three. So as long as we can stay, we will stay here because uh, we find a good uh, way of producing here. And then uh, we stay uh, like update of what's the new space that are available in Brussels. So we keep an eye on it. Uh, but from like right now, we, we, we know that we can stay a bit here. Yeah, there was a, a huge, uh, huge amount of people at first here when it started, like in, two, in 2016, something like that. People left, but now since it's starting uh, to be known that it's going to be open uh, a bit more, I think there's like a new wave of people yep. coming back here, so it's going to uh, occupy the, the, the place yeah. that was a bit dying uh, from itself. So. And it's a so, lovely yeah. space if you want to have a party, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially yeah. during, during it's summer. Amazing it's, to it's find such an open space yeah. we, train station. Every two years, uh, more or less, we do our birthday. Yeah. We did the second, the two years birthday and four years uh, here in the yard uh, in June. Uh, and yeah, the space is special. Yeah. Uh, there, is, there is a special atmosphere, train. special feeling. Yeah. The train there. <laughs> so it's kind of uh, really industrial and weird. Uh, uh, yeah, Vibe. vibes here. Yeah. So yeah, it's really nice. Uh, it's a bit cold in winter. Yeah. Uh, for a brewery just tucked away yeah. in this. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> the, uh, what did it used to be? Do you know? It was uh, first. I think it was yeah. textile factory uh -huh. uh, at the very beginning. Then uh, pharmaceutical uh, storage oh, right. until uh, <laughs> until I think like 15 years or 20 years ago, and then the building was empty and it was bought by the, the, the municipality uh, to make a brand new project. And that's why they allowed people to stay here um, uh, while they are doing all the permits. Uh, all will find um, out 30 years later. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so let's see uh, and get a bit of let's the get in. of the brewery. Sure. Let's, get let's go. Um, so we started the brewery uh, almost five years ago. Uh, we started as a small project with both uh, small equipment to make small batch, like between three and five hectoliters, and to invest a bit of money and to be able to brew already. Or the aim of the project was to make it small, but to control all the line of the production and not to go to uh, brassage à façon, uh, contract brewing. Uh, and we started four years ago. First, we were at the, in, a, in another site close to here, uh, but the, this place closed earlier than uh, we wanted. So then we moved here uh, in 2021. And uh, so we have a small place of uh, 100 square meters. We started brewing uh, mainly uh, light beers, dry beers, uh, not strong in alcohol. We wanted uh, something easy drinking. Uh, we were really much uh, influenced uh, by Brasserie La Seine, Brasserie d'Oranc, Brasserie Dupont. That was really our three main uh, brewery that uh, influenced us when we were uh, home brewing. Uh, so yes, we started not brewing IPA, not brewing like really hoppy beer and brewing only with um, um, European hops and European uh, malt to keep like this, like a uh, characteristic of the beer, like uh, the special, special quality. 
Um, since then, uh, we have been changing a bit the, the, the concept of the brewery because we had lots of beer, lots of uh, small batch. It was difficult to uh, survive, let's say. Uh, and also we begin uh, the three person, Christophe, myself and Mar uh, Martin. And Martin left to, to, to Canada uh, three years ago. So he was more in charge of the clean beer and I was more in charge of the wild beers. So since last year, uh, we are brewing only mixed fermentation beer. And I will explain you the, the new process of uh, that, uh, how we work here. Uh, and that's why I'm happy that you come here uh, so I can tell the world <laughs> what we are doing. So a uh, quick uh, view of the brewery. That's the, the degustation room. We are not open to public. Uh, but if people contact us, uh, we are happy to welcome them here, to make them try beers, to sell beers. Uh, so we have a small bar presenting the different beers that we are doing. Um, the stock, the selling stock uh, that we keep here. And then we go through the produc production uh, zone. We will begin from the end and then we will come back. <clears throat> and how are you generally we doing in the economic climate? You know, you've now you kind of switching how did you are you surviving um, so yes it was of course difficult because we begin in, we begun in 2020 uh, two weeks before the lockdown so that's the past we don't want to speak about it too much because everyone had to go through this uh, part then we had the other um, issue it was because we were too small to produce enough and we had, we had a high cost and too, too many beers, so difficult to carry on uh, brewing all the, all the range. Uh, so since last year, uh, we are not brewing anymore. Uh, since last year, now we are buying wort. Uh, we buy wort uh, from Brasserie La Mule, that brew in 10 hectoliters, or from uh, Brasserie Illegal, that are, they are not far away from here, and they are brewing in 20 hectoliters. Um, we, bring the, uh, we bring back the wort, here in the brewery, just uh, freshly uh, cooled, uh, around 25 uh, uh, degree, mm -hmm. uh, and we begin the fermentation at the brewery. Uh, so, uh, so it's, did you say 10 hectoliters or 20? 10 or 20. 10, 10 from 20. La Meule, 20 from uh, Illegal. So depending on the, on the batch, uh, like for example, the Saison Sauvage, that is our main beer. We have uh, one beer, but with different fruit, uh, depending on the, on, the season, on the moment of the year. So we brew 20 hectoliters at Illegal and some other batches, we brew 10 hectoliters. We go with a car and we bring back uh, with uh, the IBC tots there. Uh, so we were making trials since a year and uh, now as we are used to work like this, we bought our new baby. Uh, that's, uh, that's formerly a milk tank. Uh, that comes from uh, uh, Normandy. It was uh, made, uh, it was done to make uh, cheese first. And then it was bought by uh, the Brasserie Saint Hélène that is uh, in the south of Belgium, uh, in Gaume. And that uh, is just uh, stopping his activity. Uh, and so he's selling his stuff. So he bought that because he can make, uh, he was making open fermentation like, uh, like lagers. And um, this, for this uh, tank is 25 hectoliters. So for us, it's perfect because all the wort can come in the brewery, go through there, make a fermentation that will be almost open fermentation for uh, between four, to one, uh, four day to one week. And after primary fermentation, it will be racked into fermenters or barrels. So it will allow us to make the two kind of beer that we do, we call that the young mixed fermentation beer and the old fermentation beer. Um, the young mixed fermentation beer, they don't go through woods, so they are fermenting between uh, two months to five months, depending if it's summer or winter. And uh, as soon as they get the right pH and the good density, we bottle them or we rack them onto fruit. And it makes um, wild fermentation, mixed fermentation beers with a small uh, light uh, acidity, bit of complexity, but not too much, and easy drinking. That's uh, our uh, like open range, the first range of, uh, of beer. And then the other beers, they go through uh, barrels. They are aging uh, longer, and then we do uh, coupage or a single barrel or a full barrel beer. So, 
And how many barrels uh, do you have right now? Right yeah. now we have uh, nine barrels, yeah. and uh, but we are buying uh, more. So um, this year we, we sold our uh, former equipment. That was the small uh, fermenters, uh, CCT of uh, six hectoliters. We had four of them, so we sold them to uh, Brasserie Sans Tête, that is a small brewery here in Brussels. And with this money, we are just buying new uh, equipment, this uh, tank, and uh, we just bought uh, four new barrels, and there will be uh, more coming. And we still need to buy some um, stainless steel uh, tank of 10 hectoliters uh, to make the clarification and uh, priming, uh, priming the beer. And that's what we are looking for. And how did your uh, customers who used the old La Jungle uh, accept the new? Uh, it was a yeah. It was a challenge. We didn't know how the public was uh, going to to react, and uh, the customers also. We lost some of the customers, and we won some other. Uh, we were already known for our mixed fermentation beer. Uh, it was one of our uh, uh, aspect of the brewery because not so many people uh, are doing it uh, like our way. Uh, so it was not a big change, it was not 100% change, it was uh, like a reorientation, so many people understood. Uh, we are selling a bit more to a wine shop, a restaurant or a other big, um, big shop and a bit less to bars, that's uh, sure, but uh, we still, um, as there is not so many people working with big bottles also, like the 75 centiliters, it's also a product that uh, people are looking for. So it's sure that there, it's not the same volume uh, in the bar. We don't bring like uh, 20 boxes a week in a bar, but uh, still people are looking for this kind of product. And they are like a um, product we can say with a bit of added value, uh, like fine product with fruit, slight acidity, um, complex complexity. So um, from now we are really happy because uh, uh, we, we haven't sell uh, less than before. And we are still um, talking to people to explain uh, what we are doing. And, uh, and that's always the big challenge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah making the message, uh, yeah, passing and the message. What, what's your production now since you switched, uh, would you say? Uh, so before, when we, uh, in the former uh, way of producing, we were producing like uh, 150 hectoliters a year. This year we will reach 100. And the aim is to go back to 150 and a bit more uh, to, to reach the good uh, production, knowing that uh, the beer, it's beer with more added value. So going back to the same volume or a bit more means uh, selling uh, more, like more, uh, more sales. And so, since you have this cool ship, yeah. you know, the inevitable question is, are we? Yeah. So we made the first um, spontaneous batch uh, almost three years ago. It was aging in barrel for two years. It was really nice, really nice fruit, nice complexity, uh, a bit of too much uh, acidity. Right? Uh, it, yeah, we made it turbid mash with 40% uh, wheat uh, pills, and it was really nice, a bit too uh, acidic. So we made uh, with this barrel, we made a blend, uh, coupage that is uh, aloblé. It was uh, released for our, our birthday, and it was. Uh, uh, raw wheat saison uh, blended with the, the barrel. It was really nice. So of course we are uh, thinking in uh, in doing uh, spontaneous fermentation. This You're not uh, calling it lambic yet, or uh, no? I think no, no. For me, I don't know. We don't. We haven't spoke about it yet. But for me, like calling it lambic will be like doing only that. For us, it will be something. Yeah. Plus, like yeah, because yeah. uh, like brewery uh, Tamans, they're doing both, right? Regular beers and yeah. the lambics. Yeah. And then we have uh, uh, Brussels Beer Project. Yeah, to sure. Hand. Maybe, uh, but it's too soon to speak yeah. because as we haven't uh, begun yet, yeah. uh, we're still and we are experimenting. So yeast, right? yeah, so if we do it to the, this winter, uh, it will be one batch just to try again yeah. and to prepare the the, the future. But yeah. as we are working on the new way of producing here. It's enough job yes. uh, right now. Yeah. And we want to, we want to do the stuff uh, well. So 
maybe we will do one batch te test batch this summer, uh, this winter and uh, and a bit more uh, uh, next year but it's of course we have that in mind because uh, yeah 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 and, and to, but you have to and learn to tangle always it's all part of learning these yeasts around yeah. the area we have been learn learning a lot since five, four years working with our way of producing that i can explain after sure. that's al already a specific way of, of, of working um, so uh, so we will take the time to make it to make the, the stuff right uh, la later on with uh, lambic and it will it's super interesting because it can bring lots of complexity uh, to to all the beer you, uh, that you are doing. Uh, your current lineup, how many beers now are you doing? With <coughs> uh, so we are trying to keep uh, three uh, beers all year long. First one is beer de table, which is a uh, wheat uh, beer, really light, uh, three point eight, yeah. uh, mixed fermentation, no wood. So yeah, what's the percentage on that, I think it's quite. You kept it quite low, right? Because three point eight uh, percent of alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Um, then we have the spelta, that is um, uh, saison de coupage. So it's a spelt beer, uh, freshly uh, freshly brewed, mixed with um, a barrel of uh, spelt beer that is like one or two years old. And then we have the old English brown that. Uh, it's a bit what remains from uh, our, the past time when we were brewing English beers. Uh, we were brewing like a porter, brown ale, bitter. So now we still uh, produce, uh, it's an older brown, but based on the um, English uh, brown ale recipe. And so it's brown ale that is aged for two years in barrel and then blended with a small amount of fresh beer. Not, uh, not, it's more barrel than, uh, than fresh beer. So that's the three that we are trying to keep um, all year long. Then we have the range of Saison Sauvage. They are present all year long, but we have uh, four uh, different beers, uh, depending on the, on the time of the year. So we begin uh, in spring releasing the Saison Sauvage Orange Sanguine. That's the first one we, we do uh, in the beginning of the year. Then we do the Saison Sauvage Cherry and Rhubarb and then the white peach and the red plum. And like this, we all year long, we have the Saison Sauvage, but the fruit, yeah, yeah it depends. And then we have uh, some uh, anniversary beer. We work with a winemaker in uh, Anjou, Guillaume Noir, and uh, each year uh, he bring us a uh, wine pomace and uh, we do uh, Single single barrel uh, beer with a uh, wine uh, grape pomace. That was also part of the new uh, challenge. It was to simplify the way of working. Before that, we had three range: uh, saison English and mixed fermentation. Inside all the ranges, uh, many different beers, and so it was too complex, too too many things to to produce. Right now, we work with three type of wort: the wheat wort uh, for the table beer, the rye wort for the saison sauvage, and the spelt wort uh, for the barrel. And with these three words, we can produce all our beer and sometimes some, some exception, but uh, it means that we can buy a bigger amount of wort, uh, reduce the cost and, and reduce all the work that we, and we do. More, uh, and for focus yes. more out of your grain, I guess. Sure. And we are a small project. We are working only the two of us. Uh, we want to keep it like this. We were thinking in the past to get bigger, but now uh, we, we want to keep it uh, at our size. So that's also the way to, to do it. And to, uh, I'm doing production. Uh, Christophe is doing a selling contact communication. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, I think for us, it was the smartest way to, to carry on because uh, by the, the time uh, today, it's really difficult for all the brewery, specifically the small project. So yes, now we can, you can call as a fermentary, <laughs> more than a brewery maybe, uh, but we are really happy that it, uh, it worked. After a year, we can say that it's a success and that we can finally plan the future this way and, uh, and it's working. So nice. we are super happy. And is this a full-time job for you guys? Uh, Part-time. Part -time. Yeah, yeah, uh, supposedly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can always put in more. No, uh, the, normally what we wanted to do was uh, to work three days a week uh, for the project and to have two days uh, to work abroad. It has been changing uh, many times. Um, I'm the one that is um, bro uh, working as a independent, I don't know how to say yeah, uh, independent, yeah, independent freelance. freelance for the brewery. So 
Uh, my other job is to work for the other breweries in Brussels. Oh. Yeah, so I've been working a bit uh, for L'Hermitage for delivery. Uh, okay. Last winter I've been working six months in Cantillon in production. Oh, okay. And right now I began to work uh, for the Brasserie uh, Un B de Té, which is in La Coop okay. uh, with Gilles. And yeah. uh, I'm, I, I began to brew uh, for him. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so full time brewing then in the brewing world. Yeah, full time in the brewing world, yes. I even made some uh, bottle conditioning in the Brasserie de la Seine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I'm. You gotta do what you gotta do to keep this going. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I, I like the, 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 the brewery world in, in, in Brussels. Yeah. It's lots of friends, lots of good connections, so. Yeah. Uh, it's and you can it, learn a bit more and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like e even putting bottle in boxes, you know, yeah. you, you 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 see stuff, you learn stuff, you feel stuff, and uh, it's always an inspiration and talking to people and uh, yeah, th there is a good atmosphere in the yeah. brewing scene in Brussels, and that's really enjoyable. So uh, I'm happy that uh, I have this uh, this way of working. And Christophe is uh, uh, doing like a video uh, montage video. I don't know how to video say. editing. Video yeah, production. video editing and uh, video and working in some bars and uh, oh, yeah. So it's uh, flexibility, versatility, uh, <laughs> but always trying to keep the the project for, uh, running. And so these are your barrels over here. Yes, so that's the uh, warm room for refermentation uh, in bottles. We, all the bottles, we try to keep um, at least one month uh, for refermentation and in total three months before selling. As it's mixed fermentation, they are working slow, uh, slower uh, and to get the, the good uh, carbonation, but also to have the wild um, fermentation flavor. Uh, we try to keep it uh, three years for the basic beer and the barrel aged beer we try to keep it six months if possible uh, but with the turnover we we, we, we always have a bit uh, of the previous batch to sell when we produce the other so uh, like Spelta and uh, English Brown Ale, uh, Old English Brown we try to keep it at least six months to have a good uh, balance, good complexity, good uh, uh, wild flavor let's say. Um, I'm glad you're working with spelt. Not many people uh, know that ancient uh, grain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a uh, old uh, wheat, yeah. but uh, yeah, that's my that's my favorite grain um, for mixed fermentation, barrel aging. It gives a really like fruity, uh, fruity, grainy uh, uh, aroma to the beer. And um, yes, if we work with um, uh, spontaneous fermentation, it will be with a spelt base uh, wort. Is it difficult yeah. to source? It's kind of okay to find uh, to uh, all the, uh, the the producers, but it's a good question because um, also right now uh, for the special uh, cereals like spelt rye wheat, uh, we don't work with uh, malt. We work with a uh, raw uh, cereal, and we bought we bought them to a Belgian farmer that is close to uh, after Charleroi and uh, he's working only with um, old variety. Uh, the wheat, it's a blend of uh, 15 old variety of wheat, it's a mix. Uh, the rye, it's an old variety also, and the spelt also. Uh, and uh, he's working, uh, he's not spraying anything on it. Uh, it's not it's organic, but... Uh, like yeah, it's great. And uh, this one is, uh, he was a big farmer. Uh, now the sun is, um, is running in the, the, the farm and he kept like a few hectares just to make his stuff, so growing all variety of, of cereals. And he bought um, a, a small uh, grain mill, two small grain mills, and he's doing uh, flour. Uh, flour. Um, he's working with um, uh, Alexis uh, uh, at um, Pampin, the, the, the bakery in the Marol. And so we met him uh, through Alexis, that is also running Osma in, uh, okay. in Torre Taxi. And so, um, so right now, all the batch, they are like um, between 15 to 25% of uh, raw cereals, always. And always uh, from that guy, so yeah. And the, 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 the aim is to try to uh, earn a bit of um, uh, mousse feel into the beer. Because with dry beer and mixed fermentation beer, as we do, uh, they are most of the time really bone dry and really uh, tense. And so we are trying to, to give smoothness to the beer, uh, working with uh, uh, raw cereals. It gives more protein, more uh, 
a good feeling in the mouth and uh, and also because it's nice to be able to source yourself your own uh, raw material and uh, and uh, we are really happy to work with uh, Bruno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's hope that continues then. Yeah, that's the that's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's the barrels uh, mainly with um, so the spelt uh, base beer. Uh, we have one collab with uh, Brasserie Un B de T also. We've done a clean beer uh, in uh, last April for uh, our birthday, Cereal Gothic. It was super good. It's a saison with uh, all the cereal possible. And so we brewed back uh, four hectoliters in the brewery to put in a racking barrel and let it age maybe one year, maybe more. And we will see how the, how the barrel evolves and uh, how, what we can do with it. Uh, here it's more the maceration place. Uh, we work with uh, all fruit, fresh fruit. Uh, you, so we make uh, the maceration in the IBC tots. And then uh, we rack it uh, on, the, um, on the tank there. One for clarification, the other one for priming. And that's the two that we are selling um, to buy a bigger one. Like two, we, we'd like to have like two tank of 10 to 12 hectoliters, one uh, with a jacket to, to cool the beer and uh, clarify it, and the other one just to, 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 to mix with sugar. And, uh, and that's it. That's a small, uh, small brewery, so it's uh, <laughs> well, easy to see, you know. And you've told us your plans for the future. Mm -hmm. What's the, you're going to build up, you say, probably you think 150 hectoliters a year will be... Next year, if you can reach one, um, 120, uh, 100, uh, yes. Uh, as long as we are here in the city gate with the 100 square meters, I think it will be uh, enough uh, for the space and the work. And uh, the dream place for the future will be like the double of the triple of the size. I think with 200 square meter, it will be enough. Uh, more accessible to public, like uh, with a street door and maybe closer to, to, the, to the people or, ac or with accessibility with a metro tram. And uh, yes, to have a bigger space for more barrel, more tanks and a small bar that we could uh, open one or two nights uh, per week. And, um, and let's say maybe to reach uh, 400 hectoliters, I think uh, four, 400 hectoliters would be the, the good volume uh, to make it sustainable. sustainable. Uh, yes, and like more easy to, uh, for, the, for both of us to, to be able to, belongs more to the, depends more to the brewery than to the other jobs. So. Is your beer uh, mostly local, Belgium I'm talking about, yep. or have you had any exports? So we were uh, only available in Brussels uh, for the three first years, and now we are selling a bit more outside of the, um, to Liège, Arlon, uh, Mons. Uh, we are working a bit uh, to sell uh, to France. We are working with one guy that is working on the east of France. So it begins step by step, uh, and then sometime, uh, you know, uh, we have opportunity to sell in uh, in Vienna, in Bern, in Switzerland, uh, where else? Uh, we, uh, to Berlin also uh, for special events. So it begin we begin to be a bit uh, more and more. Uh, I think we reach almost the maximum capacity of selling in Brussels, even if we can always do more. But now uh, we are going a bit uh, outside of. Uh, there's heavy competition in Brussels. Uh, there's so many. It's fun. I mean, it's yeah. such a great variety. We're living yeah. in a golden age with guys yeah. like you and Lisa. Yeah, it's true. The big old lady of the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm not being rude, Ivan. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they are very really helpful. helpful. Yeah. And. Uh, Great. Well, thank you for talking to us, Felix. Well, welcome, uh, welcome to come time. here, and uh, it was the right. We waited a bit uh, for, to make that, but I think it was the right moment for you to come and uh, yeah, uh, so for now the uh, we, to explain every all the new stuff of the brewery. So we are re really happy. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. For that. Thank you, Herman. <laughs>